She is from Boulder, Colorado, over 20 years in the industry, has worked on films like Stranger Things, Guardians of the Galaxy 3, and Scare Tactics. Please welcome my very good friend, Midian Crosby, to the show. Did I do it again? Did I do it right? <laughs> Lord, how you feel? Oh my God, I've been trying to get you on this show for so long and I'm so glad you're here. I love you so much and I just love your spirit. I love everything about you and I'm so thankful that I met you. Oh, absolutely. Oh Every single God. one of those words right back at you. I know, oh my you God. So much and I'm so glad we crossed paths. Me too. I mean, it was like a, it was like a crazy, yeah, it was a crazy kind of thing. They called me for, to come in on the last couple of weeks of the show, Scare Tactics. Yeah. And I met this beautiful being right here and I, I mean, boy, I was like, thank you God. And I met her. And you have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> the feeling is completely 100% mutual. Tell me how, so how you wonderful. got into this beautiful industry that you and doing the, oh my God, amazing work. I cannot even begin to tell you guys the talent that is sitting before me and how much artistic talent this woman has on the inside of her is beyond me. I mean, the stuff that you made on just scare tactics alone blew my entire mind. So tell us how you got started in this beautiful industry. Well, I'd like to say that it probably all started uh, when I watched the world premiere of Michael Jackson's Thriller at six years old. Um, wow. And from that time on, because I loved him so much, I loved him as a zombie, I loved him as a werewolf, I loved him. I was also introduced to a lot of uh, um, Eastern uh, religious iconography, like um, uh, like things that look like demons. I have a tattoo that's covered right now, but it's a Vajrapani, and it's like it looks demon-esque. It looks very fierce, but it's a protector. Mm. And so, like you know, and, and things like. Uh, um, Ganesh mm -hmm. and uh, my mother uh, took me all over the world as a, as a little baby and as a small child and I got introduced to a lot of uh, different cultures mm. and, and seeing and just getting introduced to so much of this interesting kind of otherworldly stuff yes. kind of gave me a feeling that um, Probably it's very different, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, monsters were kind of like unusual friends, you know. Right. Things that were different were comforting. Right. Um, I, I really liked things like the X Men, you know. I really gravitated towards, you know, the the Frankenstein's monsters. Yeah. You know, the things that are misunderstood. Because, yes. Because they look different. Yeah. You know, different because I knew I was different. Right. Right. Um, and uh, I didn't really fit in uh, mm -hmm. anywhere. And yeah. actually. We had the name uh, Jessica at birth. Um, oh, wow. I didn't. I didn't connect with it. Ever. Yeah, at two wow. years old, I was telling people to call me Casper after Friendly Ghost. Yes. Um, I was always trying to find some other name to kind of like relate to. With. Yeah. Um, and a friend of mine changed her name, and I was like, "You can do that." Uh, a lot of my life has been like, you know, realizing that you can do things that right. I didn't realize you could do. Uh, same with special effects. Reading through a magazine uh, at, uh, you know, 20 years old, looking at um, three different ads for yeah. schools for mm -hmm. special effects. You can do that right. in Colorado. Um, yeah. There's like a little bit of commercial work there, but there's no film. Wow. It's yeah. practically non-existent. Mm -hmm. And so I didn't know anybody that did it, but I knew the job existed. Right. My brother showed me Fangoria magazines and some of Fantastique and like I saw people making masks and doing all these things and I just thought it was amazing. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was introduced to movies and film, uh, television that was way age inappropriate. Mm -hmm. uh, I saw the, the John Carpenter's The Thing when I was nine. Wow. And it just like really blew my mind because uh, there was this moment where I was like, it's only a movie. It's only a movie. This is absolutely horrifying to me. Um, but I also like intrigued. Like, mm -hmm. how do they do that? But it took me a while because uh, initially I wanted to be an actress. Wow, that's and, awesome. Uh, I was discouraged from that by uh, my mother. Uh, she said, don't do that, you'll never make any money. And I found out later Aww. that she went to school for acting in New York. Oh so my I think God. she was pushing her yeah. own failures onto me. Yeah. 
Um, and so, you know, there was this, this kind of like bucking of the system, mm -hmm. that, you know, and, and even bucking of my own, you know, family. Uh, I went to school on my own, kind of trial by fire, I flames tattooed on my feet. Uh, and then I got right before I went into college. Wow. So I'm going to do this, you know. And even during, when I had a hard time, I'd call my mom and say, I'm having a hard time. And, and she'd want me to take the easy way out. She's like, oh, quit. Come to Africa, where she was working at the time. Yeah, you know, yeah. We'll just do this instead. Come back, come back. Right. I know, oh, I have exactly. to do this. Yes. This is yes. what I need to do. Yeah. I knew as soon as I, I, I saw that it was a thing you could do, right. that I had to do it. Yes. But I also knew that um, I wanted to enjoy it. Mm hmm for as long as possible. Mm -hmm. I wanted to hold on to that specialness. Right. Um, and so a lot of the people that I saw that worked in LA, I don't know, it's kind of a jaded mm -hmm. quality, kind of an angry heart. You yeah. know, there's like, there's something that, you know, when you, you are put into a, a, a just a tiny little um, niche, mm -hmm. you know, you're only a teeth guy, you're only an eye guy, you're only this, you know, and I knew I wanted to do as many things as possible. Right. Um, I'm a multi-passionate person, I do, you know, hair, yeah. I do costumes, I wanted to do creature design, I wanted to do as many things as possible. Right. Um, you know, it's, it turns out that I specialize in prosthetics, but it's not all I want to do. Yeah. Um, and so I knew I couldn't go to LA. Mm -hmm. um, not just for the, the kind of um, narrowing of um, capabilities, but just the, the kind of deadness that I saw in people yeah. that, that, that lived that life. And I didn't know what it was about it, but mm -hmm. I had to avoid it. Yeah. Um, and in addition to that, you know, 20, 20 plus years ago, LA was, especially in the effects industry, mm -hmm. was not a place really for women. Um, yeah, the effect yeah, shops, you know, they would hire a woman to be kind of like the the looky loo mm -hmm. person there, you yeah. know, somebody to look at, somebody to kind of like, you know, they yeah. weren't given a true opportunity. Yeah. They were, they had to work three times as hard, and of course I was always working harder than most yeah. people I knew, but I kind of stayed out of the major market mm -hmm. and became a big fish in a small pond okay. um, for a lot of my career. And it kind of helped incubate me. Mm -hmm. um, of course, I made mistakes. Yeah. You yeah. know, I think if I had actually reached out and done a little bit more um, mm -hmm. throughout, uh, you know, if I found a mentor, I would have uh, uh, found success a little faster. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but everything works the way it's it sure should. does. Yeah. And I uh, ended up in Atlanta in 2017. Wow. And okay. It's been it's been great. I mean, it's been hard. Yeah, obviously yeah. Obviously, with COVID and the strikes oh God, and yeah. all this stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but probably the most important uh, change in my life. Uh, there's kind of a few things. Mm -hmm. One is this, I read a book called uh, "The Subtle Art of Not Giving a Fuck," Ooh, uh, which is a great it? book. Wow. Um, and I realized that you know through my childhood and stuff. Um, perfectionism and uh, wanting to do it on my own and like, you know, this kind of like, you know, fierce desire to do everything mm -hmm. um, made me kind of an unhappy, um, searching for perfection, stressed mm -hmm. out individual. Yeah. I needed to learn how to get fewer fun. Yeah, for real. <laughs> Me too. You ain't like, like, you know, I'd be like, oh, I didn't get the sweat on that person. I'd be crying. I'd be like, oh, no. Yes, yes. It's just like, you know what? You got to just roll with yeah. it. Yeah. So it took me a long time to kind of learn how to just, just, just be roll. a little bit yeah. more chill to actually, like, uh, trust the people that I'm working with. Yes. Um, and I unfortunately had, uh, you know, several toxic people in my life mm -hmm. um, that uh, I didn't realize were kind of dragging me down and putting me down. Mm -hmm. um, and, and Pulling you downward. Yeah. And so uh, having a divorce last year mm -hmm. has opened up a whole new pop world of That's possibilities. That's wonderful. Yeah. And just really working now on authenticity yes. and, and uh, genuine connections and yes. trusting that, you know, I believe people are good. That's and right, I yeah. That, you know, um, and not everybody that I spent my time with uh, thought that. Mm -hmm. You know, there was always this 
high anxiety mm. of, you know, you know that person, if they're better than you, then you gotta like compete and, you know. Yeah. Like, I want to work with people that are better than me in all kinds of things. Girl, I feel the same way. Yeah. I feel the same way. And I love what you said about, like, how you grew up and just not feeling like um, you fit into that, that perfect box that a lot of other people, you know, go into and you wanted to be like, you knew you were different, basically. Um, there's so many people out here that think that they know that they're different but they feel like that's a bad thing so I, I'm so thankful that you're, you're talking about this because like even me all my life I knew I was like kind of weak and you know in there in people, other people's eyes a little weird you know always happy always kind of like you know the butterfly of the party or you know what I mean just kind of uh, what should I say I, I don't even know what the word uh Flamboyant, not flamboyant, because it that's not me. I'm more just like a happy-go-lucky kind of person, and I'm always thinking on the brighter side of things, and people are just looking at me like, hey, get out of here, you know yeah. what I mean? <laughs> and I can't help the way that I am, and that's the, that was the same for you. Yeah, every negative experience that I had, I would look back on it and be like, okay, what what were the good things that yeah. I had from this? You know, was it a connection with somebody? Was it you know, a lesson not to ever do something like this again. That's yeah. still an important, good, oh, yeah. positive thing. Oh, yeah. And so everything, you know, if you can look at your past and, and your experiences and not be like a victim of that. Right. Be, uh, move forward with uh, the lessons. Yes, yes, that, yes. That you can take from something like mm -hmm. that. Then, then nothing can keep you down. Nothing can keep you down. Um, um, tell us about some of the films that you've worked on and how you, you know, started getting like all the techniques that you have underneath your belt now and just what inspired you um, to just continue to, to go up that ladder. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, <laughs> uh, I worked on a, uh, a female director um, uh, film like thriller horror called strange girls mm -hmm. um and it was shot on um 35 millimeter first film i'd ever worked on uh, i actually shot on that and um i think i got like 40 dollars a day it was one wow. of the earlier shoots yeah and i was hair makeup and costumes wow I, I designed the costume they're like oh it's this new thing you know mm -hmm. it's like complete character designer and it was just like hey midian you do your hair you can do hair wow you know, and I was kind of like throughout a lot of my early life, uh, you know, even though I went to school mm -hmm. uh, for uh, industrial, I have an industrial design degree, oh, specializing wow. in special That's effects from the Art Institute of Pittsburgh. Okay. And that taught me how to sculpt, mold, cast, apply uh, prosthetics, mm -hmm. uh, rapid prototype, how to do uh, props and like a whole myriad of, of things. That mm -hmm. was a fantastic education. Wow. Um, but uh, there were a lot of things I didn't learn. I didn't mm -hmm. learn beauty makeup there. I didn't learn um, costume, I didn't learn hair, all of those things uh, were just kind of thrown at me mm -hmm. on the job. Mm -hmm. um, and I started as kind of a department head, which is Wow. You know, when you're working in indie film, uh, yeah. like outside of a major market, people just kind of like, hey, you're good. You know, and they right. yeah. throw you these challenges that's true. and you just, you sink or swim. Yeah, um, that's true. And uh, you know, when they're paying you $40 a day, uh, yeah, you, you do, just you just do, you know you got to do <laughs> right. They're lucky to get what you think right. you know, they get. But uh, I was uh, I learned a lot. Yeah, yeah. You know, every every job I got. Um, I, I, I What's learned. your favorite one? I was always like swimming though. Like yeah. it was like in the deep end <laughs> for so long and for so many years. Right. And getting underpaid like. Oh my god! You and me both. Uh, yeah. One of my favorite films that I worked on, uh, I would say the two of them, uh, one called Eat, uh, which is a horror film where mm -hmm. um, a, uh, about a, a, a failing actress in LA that uh, starts to eat herself. Oh my god! It starts with a hangnail, and uh, I'm very proud of the work in wow. that because it was uh, the first uh, feature film that uh, my studio, Monster Makeup Effects, did all of the work for. That's amazing. Had a couple of interns, um, had my partner at the time, and that was it. We did everything. We did wow. the bullet hits, we did the, the prop. Um, legs and arms, and we did the prosthetics, and we did the bleeders, and, and it was it was a lot of work, and we were able to you know do all of it. So I'm very proud of that work. 
Yeah. Um, and then I got to work on a really bizarre, um, kind of culty kind of film called uh, Motivational Growth mm. uh, with one, one of my favorite makeup effects guys, um, uh, Steve Tolan. And we shot this in Chicago. Uh, I didn't realize until years later it's kind of not as it's it's a it's it's an offshoot of an old film from the 80s i think called uh, stay tuned mm -hmm. it's, it's very similar to that i thought this was a very unique idea but he did kind of pull a lot from this uh, older film um but it's like set in the 90s this guy's agoraphobic and uh he doesn't want to leave his apartment and so uh he, uh, his TV, his, his only friend, mm -hmm. Kent, dies, oh. and he decides to end it all. Wow. Uh, he fails in killing himself, mm -hmm. and that's when the mold in his bathroom starts talking to him. What? And it changes his life. So it's wow. really strange. Oh, wow. Uh, and I love weird. Yeah, love that's love amazing, weird. though. Like, like, anything yeah. that's, like, like, on that level, yeah. of, like, what? Yeah, exactly. Uh, you know, that's what keeps my attention. Yeah, yeah. everybody has. That, that one thing for me is on my guard hair. So yeah, I, yeah definitely. But I got to puppeteer on that one. Oh so my god! Me, I got to puppeteer. It was a twelve mechanism thing. There was three of us puppeteering. I got to do the eyebrows, That's and the, the corners of the mouth, yes. so like doing a lot of I'm always fascinated with that. Puppeteering is so very cool. cool, and it just it's just amazing. Yeah. Um, for somebody that's trying to get started into the field that you're in with that side of aesthetics that you're doing, like, uh, what do you call it anyway? What, FX or something like makeup that? Makeup effects. Yeah, makeup effects and building the, you know, the bodies and things of that nature. I know it's a lot of people out there that desire to do something like that. Tell um, our audience, like, some of the steps that you took to, to do it, you know, to begin and start. I don't know if I would suggest anyone today mm -hmm. to do it the way I did, mm -hmm. um, because um, honestly, college is too expensive. Yeah, you got uh, that right. When I went, it was almost reasonable. Um, nowadays, it's completely preposterous. Yes. So I, uh, I would suggest that people really interested in doing that today, mm -hmm. um, they should uh, do as much on their own as they can mm -hmm. and, and supplement. Um, treat it like a job. Yeah. Do it as much as possible. And that yes. is something that I did. You know, you've got to reach that 10,000 hours Heck as yeah. as you can and yeah. just burn through stuff and get mm -hmm. practice after practice after practice. You're not going to get it right the first time. No. Second time, third time, fourth time, fifth time. Right, exactly. <laughs> you know, you've got to keep doing keep it. You've got to, you know, and it's really hard when you do something that look, looks, you know, it's not good. Mm -hmm. um, and to do it again, despite the fact that you didn't do mm -hmm. well the first time, that's, that's the trick. Yeah. You really have to, to, to battle your own fear of right. doing something new, of doing something badly, and trying again. Right. That is that is like a key hurdle that I yes. see a lot. Um, yes. But I would take classes with somebody that's in the industry locally. Mm -hmm. uh, where you are, preferably if you are in the middle of Idaho, Mm -hmm. You might want to move. Yeah. <laughs> like, like that's that's just what, you know. It's like honestly, there are a few hubs. You know, whether it's uh, you know New York and surrounding areas, Chicago and surrounding areas. Yeah. Atlanta obviously is like oh, huge. Yeah. LA is huge. You want to be in a major city, right? Um, at the very least. Yeah. Um, but that's somewhere in those cities, there's going to be people that are in the industry. Um, teaching classes mm -hmm. and you want to connect with them and you want to ask questions and you want to offer help and you want to do as much as you can to become indispensable to somebody that is already in the industry mm -hmm. um, and I think that's probably the best way to get into it these days yeah um, but really being it's location 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 yeah it really is um, being in Boulder Colorado you know we kept saying oh the film's gonna come here it's gonna it's gonna get here some time and I spent 10 years there like oh we got God. everything that came through there and it was it was hard it wow. was yeah i can imagine it was good yeah like we stayed busy enough yeah but i wish we'd come here yeah like years before we did oh wow because it was it was harder than it needed to be. yes yes you know but working with student films like mm -hmm. sometimes student films are the things that got us through wow um, yeah you know, we might be the only people getting paid mm -hmm. but, um, to not turn your nose down at anything, because, right? You know, negotiate. Learning how to negotiate. Yeah, you know, that's negotiate it. a kit rate to negotiate. That's you know, very true. What they want, you know, maybe 
what they want, they can't afford, and mm -hmm. you have to kind of like make a compromise. You know, right. you want to make it look good enough, but you don't want to kill yourself mm -hmm. for nothing. Yeah, that's true. That's and very so true. you know, trying to do some variance. Yeah, of, come of to a happy medium there. Um, any lessons um, that you've learned along the way that are like one of your most important, some, some of your most important lessons that you've learned? Oh man, give fewer fucks. And, oh yeah. And don't take, don't think things personally. Uh, yeah. like the, I, I recommend reading, uh, you know, The Four Agreements, uh, mm. which is a great I heard book. I so much about it's that so book. Good. Uh, those two books uh, are, are really good. But don't, mm. you know, it's like, we're all thinking that the world is, is judging us. Yeah, um, and you know, especially as women, um, we're we're kind of taught to be good girls. We're taught to be like not um, to to like speak up too much, mm -hmm. not to be too, you know, uh, disrespectful or you know, yeah, like we're kind of seen in your even place even or top, yeah. it's like we're seen as being a bitch. I know. So, like we have to kind of get over that. Yes, um, I would say like that. That is a big lesson. And being in my forties now, it's like. I love it. Girl, I love my 40s. It's like you can just relax. Oh my yes. like, it's like not I don't care. Judging you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's like I don't even care. Mm -mm. It's, oh my, it's, it's the best thing ever. The 40s are the best. I'm like, wow, why didn't I know this before? And it's because society, it, because they know it. Yeah. Um, and they, in controlling women, uh, they can control what we spend, what we buy, mm -hmm. um, and how we act. Uh, and that we're easier to control when we give too many fucks. Yeah. And so I really love, that's what I love about social media now. That's mm -hmm. what I love about TikTok is that all these younger women are starting to learn these things. Yes. Like, I didn't know what a narcissist was. I didn't know. Yeah, I didn't know none of that stuff. Like a lot of like these, like, you know, people that take advantage and people that, that do things. Yeah. Like, and being able to recognize that. Oh my God. And, and, and you know, work your life around that. Yes. And, and not and get just, trapped into like right. certain relationship yeah, and just, dynamics. Just, and just put people in, just leave mm -hmm behind and keep on going and you know I love that for women uh, today. I love that for young people you. today mm -hmm. and uh, I don't think they can realize you know I, everything it's hard life it is, is. hard it's, uh, it's very hard and I don't know if it's harder now or easier now than it was but it's always gonna be it's, yeah there. so and it's gonna be a challenge somewhere the biggest thing I'd say is is don't be looking for a future goal to make you happy that's true. It is the journey yes, and the people you around you right now. Yes. And you gotta look at every single something in every day. Yes. That you have like wonder. Yes. You should be just feeling wonder. Yes. At, at something every day mm -hmm. and every being day. grateful. Being grateful. Uh, because Otherwise, this is all we have. you're going to be unhappy yeah. and you're never going to get there. It's always going to be out of reach. Right. And it's going to make you an unhappy person. And life is so short. I mean, and like, I mean, people are just dropping every day. And we have to learn to just, just be happy with everything that's going on in our daily lives. So I totally agree with you on that. There's two things, two things, other things that I'm passionate about. Um, and that is uh, directing. Um, I've directed several, fe uh, several short films. I'd like to do a, a feature. Oh my, uh, my specialty is, of course, sci-fi and horror, uh, because I know how to do the effects. Um, I know how effects should be done, um, and uh, you know, working with actors, and uh, that is definitely a passion. So, if you want to see my director's reel, uh, just uh, go onto YouTube and Monster Midian Director's Reel. Oh my um, God! When did you start even like? Like wanting to direct? Ah, forever. Wow. Um, but I finally did it uh, probably 2016, I think. Uh, it was just during a slow time. There was issue. like a contest. Yeah. He was like, let's just do this. And That's you amazing. get your friends together and you do some things. We spent like $58. Spent two days shooting it. Oh um, my god! Friends like put it together, and you know uh, that's amazing. It's a really, really good time. That is amazing. It takes a. It really takes a lot of like confidence, and you know, just wanting to do it and passion behind it to do something, to step out into the director's field. Yeah. So congratulations on that. That's amazing. I can't wait to see what else you direct in the future. And please hire me for hair. Yeah. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs>
<laughs> and then at some point I'm gonna have a, a cafe because Yay! cooking is another passion. Oh, oh, let's not even get that twisted, honey. <laughs> Mindy, let me tell you, she loves to cook, bake, and all that, and I just love to eat her stuff. Okay, whatever she brings to me, I just eat it, and I, and I love, love. I love your cooking. So thank you so much. Thank you. you know, you and I could talk forever. Let me just first say that. Yeah. We'll we'll spend two hours just sitting here at this table. <laughs> but you know, for the sake of time and my my phone memory, <laughs> I just wanted to ask you, uh, where could they fo uh, follow you and find you on social media and look at your amazing work that you have? Uh, I'm on most uh, platforms. I'm not on X. Um, oh no no! <laughs> I mean, I guess I'm out there somewhere, but I haven't been on it in so many years. Yeah. Uh, it's just I'm more of a visual. Uh, yeah. So Instagram uh, at Monster Midian and uh, MonsterMakeupEffects.com. Awesome, awesome, awesome! Any final words you want to leave with the audience today? Just go look beyond yourself. Yeah. Um, and and connect with uh, others uh, because you will be surprised at how wonderful people really are. Oh, thank you guys so much for watching and thank you, Minnie, for coming by. I love you so much. <laughs> See y'all next time.